Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. Today I'll be showing you how to handle environment variables and all the ways you can handle them with Tweet and Remix. I'll be going over the client variables and the server variables and all the options you have. I'll show you some neat tricks you can do to actually get some type safety and that's it. So without further ado, let's just jump into it. So the first thing we're gonna need is Zod. Now that we have Zod installed, we're going to create a new file in .server and that file name is going to be environment.server.ts and we're gonna import Zod here or rather the Z from Zod. We're going to export a const called init environment and what this is going to do is this will run on the server side of Remix so not the client only the server and what this will do is it will initialize the environment variables and make sure that they are set properly and if they're not it's going to crash your server which is a good thing because it's not going to cause any issues because you don't want your app running without the environment variables and then crashing mid-use in production you want it to crash while being deployed so it doesn't get deployed at all and you can fix whatever is wrong and then deploy a proper working version of your application. So we're gonna save this for now and we're gonna go to entry.server and we're gonna import it here and run it. And we're gonna add a comment here that says initialize environment variable so we know what this is doing even though it's kind of implied from the name and we're gonna save that again and we're gonna do the following thing the first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna create an environment schema and this is gonna be an object and we're gonna close it and inside of here you're going to add everything that you want your server to have so for now we're gonna go with the node environment port and inside of here what we're gonna do is we're gonna say environment is equal to environment schema dot save parse if this is not successful we're going to we're going to show an error message and we're going to list everything that went wrong so error dot flatten and we're gonna say field errors here so this will tell you what is missing in the process dot environment and we're gonna close this and we're gonna save it. Another thing we're gonna do is we're gonna throw a new error that says invalid environment variables. Here you can also exit the process or do whatever you want to do but it's best to throw the error and we're gonna save this. So what did we do here? Because we import this in the entry.server this will crash as soon as your server runs and you won't be able to run the application until the environment is properly set and why do we do this only on the server because the server will have all the secrets of the application and the client should not have all the secrets of the application but rather a subset that we want to expose and we're gonna go into how you can do that a little bit later but for now we only care about the server so now that we throw this and we have that covered we are going to do a cool little trick for type safety and that is we're going to declare global here and this means the global workspace and inside of here we're gonna say namespace and before doing anything here first what we're gonna do is we're gonna create a type called app environment and that's going to be zod infer type of environment schema and the app environment we're gonna use in the following way so because we de declared this in the global scope of the application the first thing we want to do is on the namespace node.js the interface process environment so this is process.environment it extends our app environment which means whatever we add inside of this schema here automatically becomes type safe and good to use but you need to be careful on one thing here if you want to cast types properly you need to be very careful to not use process.environment but rather parse them with zod first coerce the types and then use them i'll show you in a little bit how to do that but for now this is important for you to know and we're gonna save this. All right, so now if I do process.environment.process, dot dot 
port is going to be a string. And if I add something like test, I say test here. You can see if I hover over it, it's a string and it's optional. And let's say I want test to be a boolean, so I can do boolean here. And if I open this up, I can say coerce to true. If I hover over it, it's a boolean. But the issue is, if you set this in the dot environment to be a string, and you directly access it like this, you're going to have an issue where basically this is a string, but it's falsely typed to a boolean. So it's better to create a utility where you actually get the server environment. So you can either do something like export const get server environment. And what we can do inside of here is we can first return the environment.data here. And then inside of here, we can do return init environment or rather we can just clean this up and just return it right away. So why do we want to be explicit here is because we want to for certain know that we're getting the server environment and we can save this and then for the client environment, we also do get client environment, but the difference is let's say we get the server environment here and then we just return a subset of this server environment but this won't be called on the client but on the server again and this might be a little bit confusing but i'll explain why in a moment and we're gonna save this we're gonna add another type here called client environment and that's going to be the return type of the get client environment here and if you hover over it it's only the node environment as you can see and now that we have this type we're gonna export it all right and now let's go to the root tsx here and why did we say that we're gonna still fetch it on the server but it's going to be on the client the reason behind that is because you can set all the environment variables on your server and then return them via loader to the client and then let the client use them for whatever it needs to use them for so what we're gonna do here is we're gonna say client environment is equal to get client environment here and this will fetch the client environment and we're going to return it to the client and here inside of the loader we will already have the client environment available and another cool thing we can do is from here we can export the helper hook called use client environment and what we're gonna do is we're gonna return this so when i hover over it you can see that it returns the node environment as a string and if i save this and remove this we can now use the use client environment wherever we need it another thing you could do is for example use an effect here and whenever the client environment changes which we will need to import again i want to run the following thing so if I want to return if the window is undefined. This shouldn't ever be the case, but just in case. And then the window.environment is going to be the client environment. But this is complaining. So what we can do now is go back here and then say interface window and the environment variable is going to be the client environment. And then if we go back to the root, this is not complaining anymore. And it resets the client environment whenever it changes. This is another way to do it. It's really up to you and how you want to handle it. What you can do now is, for example, say window.environment.node environment, as you can see. And that's going to work as well. I wouldn't recommend this. I'm not even sure if it would work in certain scenarios. I think it would work in all of the scenarios because the root is always rendered on every page so even if you navigate between pages it's still gonna be there it's really up to you how you want to handle it here and let's say you need an environment variable inside of the entry client server here there's a easy way to do it and that's using the hinton remix globals I wouldn't recommend doing this for obvious reasons but if you do remix context dot state.loaderdata.root.client uh, environment and this is also possibly undefined this will contain the client environment but this is horribly hacky and prone to changes because this is a remix internal so please don't use this just use it like as a last resort but i'm going to show you two 
proper ways to do it. So Vite offers you two ways to handle this. And if I open my environment.test here, um, the first way to handle it is prefix a variable name with Vite. And for example, if you add a Vite API URL, this will be available on the client and you can use it like that. That's your first option. So prefix the environment variables and then use them like that. And the second option that I prefer more, and I would only do this for certain environment variables that you can get from the root loader and you need them in the client entry.server is in the vid config, you can say define. And then for example, let's say a node environment and what you can do is you can json stringify a process environment to node environment for example and this will be available as a constant in your whole application this approach really depends on where you're deploying it to and if this will be available at build time but this is another way to do it so for example if you go to environment.d.ts here you can just declare a constant called node environment and say it's development or production and if i go to the entry.client so here inside of entry client if i do console log node environment this is complaining and it says it can't find it so if i go back to environment.ts this is declared properly um i think if i delete this it should work yeah so here now it works and this will be injected into your site so i guess i'll need to split the files up to make sure this doesn't cause the issues with typings i'm not really sure why this happens but yeah that's the other way to do it so you can basically import any constants into your project by using the vid config here the important thing you should know is you should never do something like process dot environment is process dot environment because what this will do is this will take all sorry there's an extra c here um so what this will do is it's gonna take all your environments even from the server and then set them in here which means you'll expose everything to the client again so either the declare the constants like this use the hack i showed you earlier with the window or find a way to not have the environments here but rather in the root here or wherever else in your project where you can get them via hook or by window.environment and you shouldn't try to do window.environment here even though it's available with declaration typing it's not really the case and this hasn't been set yet especially because this runs before your app gets hydrated which means this effect has not run yet when the entry client has fired off so this will not be available just so you know and don't think hey why can't i just do window.environment dot blah 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 and that's it i've shown you how to handle backend and frontend environment variables and the last thing i want to show you is if i run the development server here you can see it crashes and says invalid environment variables and it says it failed in the init environment. And if I close the app, go to environment.server and add what's missing. And now that I've added it into the dot environment off screen, I can run the dev command again and then it launches properly. And the cool thing I can show you now is if I cancel this and I console log environment.data and I run it again you can see that the types are coerced to whatever we need it to be the port is a string the test is the boolean and we have the node environment now you can add whatever you need here configure your client and server environments and play around with this it's really up to your specific needs what you need to do but in the future videos, we'll be using these methods to inject some stuff into our project. So I've needed to set this up first. Another thing that we can optimize is here, we're gonna set the environment inside of here, and we're gonna change this environment to be environment data. And what we do is here in the get server, 
environment we're gonna just return the environment and here as well so we don't really have to refetch it it's going to be initialized as soon as the app runs so now that we run this and i console log here again and if i save this and we save this again you can see that it only runs once and if i run the server again it only runs once again and that's it and also if i go to the root here and if i console log the client environment here we can see that we only get the node environment and then we return that to the client and i'll delete this and save it and that's it thank you for watching and see you in the next one bye